All right, let's jump right in. We are talking about what might just be one of the biggest, most ambitious tech gambles of this century. I'm talking about India's high-stakes race to become a real powerhouse in the global semiconductor game. And look, this isn't just about building a few factories. This is about fundamentally trying to redraw the map of the world's most important supply chain. You know, it's kind of wild when you stop and think about it. Our entire digital world, everything that powers your life, it all starts with something as basic, as common as sand. But how does that even work? And there it is. That's the magic trick. That sand gets purified and transformed into ultra-pure silicon, which becomes the foundation for these tiny electronic brains. They're in your phone, your car, the massive data centers that run the internet, even in critical military gear. These chips are, and I mean this literally, the lifeblood of our modern world. I think we all got a pretty harsh lesson on that a few years ago during the pandemic, right? Suddenly, car factories were shutting down, you couldn't find a new PlayStation anywhere, and the prices for electronics went through the roof. It was this massive, global wake-up call that a tiny handful of places on Earth basically held the keys to the entire digital kingdom. That painful memory, that's the real starting point for this whole story. So yeah, that wake-up call kicked off a worldwide scramble. I mean, countries everywhere had this sudden, terrifying realization of just how fragile their supply chains were. And for a country like India, this wasn't just a crisis, it was a once-in-a-generation opportunity. So why this massive push right now? Well, it's really a perfect storm of four huge factors hitting all at once. First, you've got the global geopolitics. Everyone is looking for a China plus one or a Taiwan plus one strategy. Then you have the fresh memory of the pandemic chaos. At home, there's the sheer economic reality of importing over 90% of your chips. And wrapping it all together is national security. In today's world, if you can't make your own chips, you are strategically vulnerable, period. So you've got the why, but what about the how? How do you go from being almost totally reliant on imports to being a major player? Well, you start by putting some serious, serious money on the table. And India's bet is a truly massive one. And they came out swinging. The government kicked things off by launching the India Semiconductor Mission, or ISM, with a $10 billion war chest. This wasn't just some vague promise. It was a dedicated fund specifically designed to attract the world's biggest names in chip making. And that government money? It worked exactly as planned. It was like a giant magnet. Just look at this one project. A team up between India's own Tata Group and Taiwan's power chip is bringing in another $11 billion. And this is to build the country's very first major fab, which is the incredibly complex, insanely expensive factory where the chips are actually made. So you add it all up. You take the government's 10 billion, you add the 11 billion from the private sector, and across just the first 10 approved projects, we're already knocking on the door of $20 billion. This isn't just a few random factories. This is a massive, coordinated national strategy to build an entire industry from the ground up and to do it fast. And here's where it gets really interesting because it's not just about the money, it's about the partners. You're building this global coalition on Indian soil. Of course, you've got the huge Tata Fab, but look who else is coming to the party. Micron, a huge player from the US, is building a critical facility for something called ATMP. That's assembly, testing, marking, and packaging. Basically, all the final steps to get a chip ready for use. You also see a key partnership with Japan's Renesis. This is a huge global vote of confidence. But okay, putting up the cash is one thing. Actually competing on the world stage? That's a whole different ball game. India is basically a rookie stepping into a league that's been dominated by a few absolute goliaths for decades. I mean, just look at these numbers. The scale of the challenge is, well, it's staggering. Taiwan, by itself, makes over 60% of the world's semiconductors. And if you're talking about the most advanced, cutting-edge chips, the ones that power AI and supercomputers, that number for Taiwan jumps to over 90%. That is the mountain that India is setting out to climb. And this slide really gets to the heart of India's fascinating paradox. On the one hand, it's already a design powerhouse. Get this, 20% of the entire world's chip designers are based in India, working for giants like Intel and NVIDIA. The brainpower is absolutely there. But 
On the other hand, it's a total manufacturing novice. The new fabs are a huge deal, but they're focusing on what we call mature nodes. Think of these as the essential workhorse chips. They're not the super fast brains in the latest iPhone, but the reliable chips that go into your car, your washing machine, and all kinds of industrial gear. It's a smart strategic choice to build that strong foundation first. But all the money and brain power in the world don't just magically build these incredibly complex facilities. As one expert put it, this journey is a marathon, not a sprint. And right now, India is heading into the toughest miles, the part of the race where the really deep foundational challenges show up. You really have to think of a semiconductor fab less like a factory and more like a patient in an ICU. It needs a constant, absolutely perfect supply of everything just to stay alive. The power greed can't flicker for even a microsecond. If it does, poof, millions of dollars of product are instantly ruined. It needs a mind-boggling amount of water that is thousands of times purer than the water you drink, and its supply chain has to run with perfect military-grade precision. These things are completely non-negotiable. And beyond the big infrastructure, you have to build the entire ecosystem. Right now, India has to import the basic building blocks, like the raw silicon wafers and all the specialty gases. There's a huge talent gap, not in the brilliant designers, but in the tens of thousands of specialized technicians and engineers you need to actually run these multi-billion dollar fabs day to day. And then, of course, you have the classic challenges of turning great research into actual products and navigating all the bureaucracy. Every single one of these is a massive hurdle on its own. Okay, so we've laid out the hurdles, and they are huge, no doubt about it. But what does the actual road ahead look like? Because these plans are not just on paper anymore. We're talking about real concrete milestones and a vision for building an entire chip nation from the ground up. And check this out. This isn't some fuzzy 10-year vision. The clock is ticking right now. By the end of next year, Micron's assembly and testing plant is scheduled to be up and running. By the middle of 2026, the first homegrown chips are expected to roll off the line at the CG power plant. The promises of today are set to become the reality of tomorrow very, very fast. The next two to three years are going to be absolutely critical to watch. But you might be wondering, who's going to buy all these new chips? Well, this right here might be India's secret weapon, its own massive, exploding domestic market. The demand for chips inside India is on track to nearly triple in just six years. This creates this incredible built-in customer base just waiting for these new factories to turn on the lights. And this quote, really, it just sums up the whole thing perfectly. You don't just decide to build a world-class semiconductor industry overnight. It takes relentless investment, unwavering political will, and deep institutional focus not just for a few years, but for decades. The initial sprint has been incredibly impressive, but it's the long, grueling marathon that will ultimately decide who wins. So that leaves us with the billion-dollar question, or in this case, the $19 billion question. India has the ambition. It has the capital. It's got the brain power, and it has a huge home field advantage with its own market. But it also faces these monumental infrastructure and ecosystem challenges. If India can pull this off, it won't just make itself more self-reliant it will fundamentally change the balance of power in the global tech world for good. The race is on.